As you likely know, cancer is on the rise, particularly in young people, but this new study in the journal Lancet, which lest I remind you, is a very high impact journal, highlights how 17 of 35 common cancers are significantly higher in individuals born after 1990. Now, this is really sad. Uh, I'm not sharing this information to glorify the increased uh, prevalence and diagnoses of cancer. Uh, I think this is really just another stark reminder that we should not be consuming junk food, that we should be more mindful about our circadian rhythms and screen time use, especially in the hours leading up to bedtime. And we should minimize our exposure to chemical carcinogens as well as in, uh, persistent organic pollutants and plastics and phthalates because it turns out that something happened in the 1990s. And that's something, there's many things that have happened. We have screens that we never have had access to before, uh, light pollution. We, of course, have plastics, right? M remember when Nalgene bottles were really hot in the 90s and plastic water bottles, everyone started drinking out of plastic. And then uh, the prolific use of uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals and flame retardants, the various laws in California and, and other states mandated that the, the furniture companies put flame retardants in their furniture. Uh, we also have the perfluoro compounds and nonstick cookware. I mean, there's a lot of things that have happened in the 1990s. So, you know, when we see these studies, to me, this just means that we should really be a lot more mindful about all of our exposures. And so uh, this is, a again, the study was published in Lancet just a few weeks ago here. The title is Differences in Cancer Rates Among Adults Born Between 1920 and 1990 in the USA, an Analysis of Population-Based Cancer Registry Data. And essentially what they found is particularly cancers of the stomach, colon, breast, uh, pelvis, liver, kidney, and as well as thyroid. You can see these images. Um, you know, out of you know, 34 different types of cancer, 17 are significantly higher in individuals born in the year of 1990 or after 1990 compared to individuals born in the 1920s. So this is really sad. I, I just think that we should all be paying a, a lot closer attention to our nutrition and lifestyle and really take mainstream recommendations with a grain of salt. There's a lot of Gen Z and millennial uh, activists on Instagram that are normalizing uh, obesity and consumption of processed foods and, and all this, this idea that you can be healthy at any size. Now, you can be happy at any size, uh, but this idea that just being overweight and eating ice cream all the time and... and I follow a few accounts on here. This woman, she says, what a 25-year-old eats in a day? And she goes to Disneyland and has cotton candy and then fries and and she's morbidly obese. And there, she's getting tons of likes and shares. And I've read the comments and all these people are saying, that's what I eat too. I'm only 27. I, it's just insane to me that we're just normalizing unhealthy behaviors and lifestyle. So we're gonna to continue to dive into this, but first, if you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Let me know what you think of these statistics and what are your thoughts? I mean, I don't think anyone really knows, but these investigators do say that there is some new exposure that has happened since the 1990s. Again, I just highlighted my thoughts here. I think it's a combination of multiple things. I think it's the ultra processed foods. I think it's really bad diet advice from in the 1980s, you know, stemming from uh, our own, you know, USDA and, and nutrition uh, policymakers here, um, you know, vilifying fat and, and really sort of glorifying uh, grain based carbohydrates and, and processed foods and stuff, cereals and grains and bagels, They're really bad diet advice. Uh, but I also think it's uh, chemical carcinogens, these plastics and endocrine disrupting chemicals. There's been a ton of papers now uh, highlighting the carcinogenic aspects of endocrine disrupting chemicals that are ubiquitous in cosmetics, in cleaning products, in furniture. I mean, these things are really, uh, really pretty much everywhere. So the implication here is there is a rising cancer in incidence in many cancer types in successively younger generations, su suggesting that increases in the prevalence of carcinogenic exposures during early life or young adulthood, which have yet to be elucidated. And so I think this is really important. So just making sure your home is clean, especially when you have young children. So it seems that there's, there's this idea emerging in the field of oncology and cancer that there's this early hit exposure. So something that you're exposed to as a child, whether it's bisphenol A or DDT or arsenic or glyphosate, whatever it may be, and it's probably multifactorial, this early hit exposure hypothesis suggests that when you're exposed to this when you're really young and the set of things, and I, again, I mentioned a lot of you know, processed food, chemicals, all that, 
that it affects your epigenetics or your genes that later in life predispose you to developing or manifesting cancer. And I would like you to live cancer free. I would like you to have a healthy life. And so if, you know, I wasn't into nutrition in the early 1990s, nor were my parents. I mean, we shopped at Costco. We bought, you know, wheat thins and Pringles and had pop tarts and uh, Eggo waffles and all the junk food that you probably had. Thankfully, we didn't drink a lot of soda. Uh, but this idea that, you know, those early hits predispose you later in life. And so we all should be uh, taking things a little bit more seriously. One of the things that I take is I take an acetylcysteine and glycine to enhance my glutathione uh, biosynthesis. These are the rate limiting amino acids that help to increase the production of your body's most important antioxidant as well as detoxification molecule. So I take this at night. You detox at night. So that's one thing. I'll put links in the, in the description below. That's one tool. Sauna and exercise. When you sweat and get hot, you're helping to eliminate or excrete these endocrine disrupting chemicals and various toxins. And I, I know a lot of people say, oh, toxins, you're being egregious here. I'm like, no, uh, commercial drinking water has arsenic, lead, and, and other negative things in there, as well as fluoride that are uh, not health promoting. Yeah, as I mentioned, clothing, there was just a report last week highlighting how polyester underwear uh, changes testicular function and sperm motility in men. So go with wool or organic cotton. And so those are the just simple underwear. Cosmetics. How many of us, you know, had uh, Old Spice deodorant growing up and cologne in these things and just, you know, or Tide laundry detergent? I mean, this stuff is, it has perfumes and uh, fragrances and parabens, things you do not want. And I know we sound a little bit weird talking about living a more natural life, but just look at the statistics. People who are living the standard Amer standard American life and exposing themselves to all the chemicals that uh, major companies, cleaning product companies as well, and furniture companies, they are not living optimal lives. And we're, we're now seeing this in the statistics. And so I think it's really important that we um, take this stuff seriously. Light hygiene. If you have compact fluorescent bulbs in your home and you're, you know, have uh, artificial light exposure or, or you don't have blackout curtains in your room, like please change that. Don't look at your phone before bed. All these little things I think add up over time and impact our exposome. And the exposome concept has to do with the cumulative exposure to all of these different chemical carcinogens and uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals, as well as uh, genotoxic toxins like arsenic or DDT. And so we need to just minimize that, minimize our exposure and enhance our excretion of these things. Uh, and I say things, I'm clumping that into the, the bucket of toxins. And so going in the sauna, doing hot yoga, exercise, any form of sweat, and having healthy bowel movements are all going to be ways to enhance your exposure and minimize your intake. And I think this is where we can weave more back into food. If we think about processed food, we know that there's a lot of empty calories, not much protein, not much in the way of micronutrients, right? That's tacitly implied and given, but processed food is packaged in plastic. Oftentimes the packaging of processed food, and various studies show this, uh, will off gas or leach out into the food the, these chemical carcinogens that are problematic and endocrine disrupting chemicals. And so your endocrine system, your immune system, your metabolic system, when that is skewed or augmented, that will affect the, the cancer biology and the formation of neoplastic cells. And so I know this sounds a little bit weird, but we need to start to live a more simple life. And so just one simple thing that we do, if we buy a new chair, we just got a new office chair uh, from Amazon. It's, it's made in China. It's, it's stunk, right? W open that stuff outside. Don't bring that into your homes. You're, because it turns out that these chemical carcinogens, um, plastics and so forth, they, a big source of exposure is inhalation, household dust. So vacuum regularly, open up your windows, get skylights uh, if you have the ability to do so. On a nice sunny day, just have all your windows and doors open. Um, the, the dust is enriched in these plastics and endocrine disrupting chemicals. So uh, if you're getting something new, even a, a new computer, I love Mac computers or TVs or monitors and tech. I mean, all that stuff is really fun, but open that outside, get the styrofoam, let it off gas on your ports before you actually bring it into your home for a day or so. I know that sounds a little weird, even with a new rug or a new couch, you know, all these things really smell the formaldehydes. 
and this is really important if you have young children because you wanna minimize their exposure because of this, this early exposure hypothesis that is talked a lot about in this article. So I would love to know what you think about this. Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'm grateful that you tuned all the way in. Appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares, and I will link this study in the show notes. But the conclusion here is something, I would say multiple things have changed in the environment since the 1990s. And that's why we are seeing a dramatic increase in the incidence and I will add mortality of 17 common cancers in comparison to individuals, individuals born in the 1920s. So live a healthier lifestyle, eat healthier foods, minimize ultra processed food consumption, start to sweat in the sauna or exercise. And please don't put chemical cosmetics on your face. Just use tallow or lard. Uh, I'll put links in the description below for all these different products and things that I personally take as well. So we'll catch you on a future episode down the road.